Well, it's time to play some Napoli. So I'm going to just grab my blue trumpet and play it. Let's see what happens. Oh, I think I need to change gear. What do you think? You ever wondered that? You ever think that? Like, man, when am I going to know when it's time to upgrade my equipment? Well, stay tuned to this video, and I'm going to tell you some of our tips and thoughts about that exact subject. Thanks for watching. everybody, it's Trent Austin from Austin Custom Brass. I hope you're doing well today. While you're checking out this video, hit that subscribe button. Stay up to date with us. We'd love to hear from you. If you have any future mini lesson suggestions, post them in the comments here. This has been a, a question we often get, especially mostly, I'll say, from parents who are thinking about the time to upgrade someone's equipment, maybe from their rental or from their first or second horn, and getting into the professional line of trumpets. Well, it goes without saying that that plastic trumpet right there, no, we don't want to, you know, try to survive our professional life on that horn. Now, there are videos that I've done comparing this horn to a $10,000 trumpet. Now, that's not where I'm going with this video. What I'm going with this video is to talk about how an instrument can hold us back and when you will know that. Now, first things first, this one is pretty obvious. This is an old ambassador. These are wall hangers from my home studio. And I'm not even sure this plays because I haven't played it. So let's see. Now, first things you'll hear. Let me turn that up back up so you can actually hear it. You'll hear that. The valves are just atrocious. The bell is bent. It's not going to really inspire me to play. We always say this when customers come into the shop. And this is a serious, serious point. What horn, when you open the case, are you going to be inspired to practice? Because as you can hear right now, none of these instruments in my studio are playing themselves. We've worked really hard at that for years to try to figure out how we can get a horn that plays itself. It's not possible. Um, I know that Toyota's invented a, a trumpet robot, but we won't talk about that. Um, the thing about it is, what are you going to be inspired? So that obviously makes a lot of sense. Now, you have to be realistic. You can say, oh, you know, I have the money for a new Kia, but I'm going to buy that, you know, BMW 750. That doesn't work. We still can get you into a great horn at ACD at tons of different budgets. For instance, this Busher trumpet, Busher, um, is $329. And this is a great upgrade from like a Chinese uh, student trumpet or something like this, which, hey, the old ambassador's trumpets are fine, but I this one's been played for 12,000 million miles. So... So you'll look at it. Maybe you think, see the cosmetics and you see how this lead pipe right here is full of red rod. It's missing a button. The bell is bent. It, it looks like it's seen better days. And it most certainly, most certainly has. So there's that cosmetic aesthetic, especially with a younger student, that you have to take into consideration because they're going to be like, I don't want to play that old trashy thing. We often see it. Somebody will walk into the shop and they're like, oh, I want a new horn. And they pull out a beautiful vintage trumpet. But they're like, eh, it's ugly. I don't really want it. Um, but I get it. Uh, I was like that too. My dad and I stripped a, a Bach back when I was in, I think maybe eighth grade, to just get it silver plated. Um, and by doing so, we snapped off the second valve slide. Oh, it was so much fun. But but that horn was Malvernon, I think. And it, and it was lacquered because I wanted a silver trumpet because everybody needed a silver trumpet, of course, right? Um, so there's that. The visual aesthetic, which is super important. 
let's get into the playing characteristics of student trumpets in general. Now, like in the case of the old ambassador, it was made very strong and robust, able to withstand a child beating it to smithereens. Or in the case of the trumba, it's light, it's flexible, it's plastic. So there's these two extremes uh, that you'll often see, uh, especially on where you find student trumpets. For us, we love these uh, Carol Brass Taiwanese student trumpets. We love the old Yamaha student trumpets. The Bach TR-300s that, that were made in America are awesome. Getzen made an incredible student trumpet. Um, really great student trumpet. There, there are lots of options that you can find on the secondary market. The reason why you would want to switch let's get to there, is student trumpets, no matter how well made they are, there's a compromise. For instance, in this case, this horn has got, right off the bat, you're missing that first slide adjuster. Now, you might say, hold on, there are horns, like great professional trumpets that don't have a first slide adjuster. For instance, this Hoop Van Lar Oiram, it doesn't have a first slide adjuster. That's a specialty horn. This is this is made like that. Or the Martin Committee, which is now like made in many versions, including the Adams A9, doesn't come with a first slide adjuster. That doesn't always dictate that, but when you're a student, you're you're not tuning with your ears as well as a professional musician, you'll want to get that first slide adjuster so we can help train people on better intonation. So that's the first point. The second thing that you'll see primarily on student trumpets is that they'll use a two-piece bell. Now in this case, I think this, this is a one-piece bell. There's another reason why we love it. But more often than not, student trumpets are made with two-piece bells because they're inexpensive to make and they're way faster to, make, to build. Now, some high-end horns. The Monet trumpet, for instance, has a two-piece bell. So it's not always indicative of that quality as well. Other things you'll see in student trumpets that, you, that you'll notice is that the valve compression on a lot of student trumpets is less than optimal, including the old ambassador. They, they cut, a little, cut a few corners to make that horn. So you will find that a, a professional trumpet has more resonance and, and spark in the sound, and it's gonna be way more fluid because it has great compression. Again, a reason why we love these horns is that these horns have really good compression off the, off the block. So if you play them, and I'm going to play this horn versus my A1, just so you can hear a demonstration, I'm going to play just a few things back and forth. Maybe you won't hear a difference. This mic isn't super hi-fi. I wanted it to be just pretty generic, a sound that you'll hear, but I feel the difference as a professional player. The A1 is so much easier to play, so much cleaner, so much more thickness and depth to the sound than a student trumpet. That's maybe the biggest reason I will switch to that horn. So let's start with this Vischer. This is $329, by the way, um, and it's awesome little trumpet. Did you hear a difference? I hope you did, because I certainly feel a difference. Now, one has to be the fact that I'm acclimated to this one. I know how it plays, I know what it does, but the richness of the tone is so much different. The intonation is better. You can hear that. Uh, the E flat on this horn, it's okay. The E flat on this horn is very good. The G on top of the staff is okay. This is very good. So there's that. Now, when we get to something like articulation, I feel a difference as well. The weight and balance of this horn, although they're 
physically about the same weight. The weight I'm talking about is the way that it responds while articulated is pretty dramatic. Now, I'm going to start on this one, and I'll play a little bit of Goldman, a Goldman 1 for you. Like I said, this is a really good student trumpet, and you could play this one for quite some time. Say you're a hobbyist or an amateur, someone who's playing in community band, someone who's gonna just play their trumpet the rest of their life, and it's cool. This would be a fine horn. But when you want the refinement in that horn, that's when you get to this. Now we'll do some slurring, and I think you'll hear this as well, especially on the open. I'll do open series and first valve series. Some of these really troublesome spots on the trumpet you'll hear difference here, starting with the Bisher, which is a Carol Brooks. <laughs> No comparison. For me, no comparison. Zero comparison. This horn is so much easier to play. I would consider it, this is fine. I, I remind you, this is a very, very good student trumpet. If I picked up the ones on the back, you would hear an even more pronounced difference. But this is, that's fine. This is awesome. So these are some of the things that I feel. The color spectrum is gigantic. So when you're playing you know, a song and you want to change your color, it's harder to do on a student trumpet just because maybe the choice of materials they use isn't as good as the choice of materials that the higher end manufacturers use. What, do you, what are your thoughts? What do you think? What do you hear? Uh, post them in the comments here. Thanks so much for watching this video. Thank you so much for subscribing. It means so much to us. Hit that button there. Keep up to date with us. Hope you have a wonderful New Year's and take care. Cheers. Thank you.